I want to thank uh, both of our nominees uh, for, for being here today, for their willingness to serve in these critical capacities. I, I also want to join the chairman in thanking uh, Ms. Ashton's husband, Ms. Havisett's wife, for your willingness to, to also be supportive of this. We all know this, these jobs involve the strong support of family in that regard, and so we are, we are grateful to, to all of you uh, for your willingness to step forward and your enthusiasm uh, uh, for the roles that you're about to fulfill, if, if confirmed. On the national, let me just say on Director Coates, I saw, told him this earlier when I saw him, I said he looks substantially more relaxed and much better than he did the last time we had him sitting at that table a couple years ago. So life is good. And we're always happy to see you around again. Uh, we have tremendous respect for you and, and um, everyone on the committee that served with you did, does. Uh, the counter, National Counterterrorism Center was established, obviously, after 9-11 to ensure better communication and coordination among the agencies by analyzing and integrating all the intelligence possessed or acquired by our government pertaining to terrorism and to counterterrorism. Um, key in that language, uh, and, and that threat is, it remains, even now as, as Ms. Amazade and I had a brief uh, conversation about this, even now as, as we focus on the growing great power competition, we, we, we are not, we cannot forget that the threat from terrorism remains and exists. Uh, my own home state of Florida has been impacted by it, both in Pensacola and, and almost uh, uh, five years ago uh, today, uh, almost five years ago today in, in Orlando, Florida. So we know that this continues to be an ongoing threat. It's an important enterprise. But, but it's interesting that, and as we read through the language that created it, it's very clear that it pertains to terrorism and counterterrorism, accepting intelligence pertaining exclusively to domestic terrorists and domestic counterterrorism. And that's an important topic for two reasons. Number one, because we do have a domestic terror problem of individuals who've been radicalized and take action, and that needs to be confronted. I don't know of anyone who would dispute that. Um, the, the question is, what role do our foreign-geared uh, intelligence agencies play in that regard? Uh, be, because as we've discussed, you know, some of the more troubling moments in the history of our intelligence agencies has been when uh, they've been turned against uh, a solely domestic threat. So it's a, it's a, it's a balancing act that we're going to have to work through, and I know there'll be some questions about that. Uh, remaining focused on that mission is particularly important because I said that the counterterrorism threat uh, is there, and uh, that work continues, needs to continue to happen. Uh, Ms. Ashton, I look forward to hearing about how you'll, how you'll lead the IG's office and your vision for a productive and beneficial working relationship with this committee our oversight role and your role uh, that you've been nominated to fill, they share a lot of the same goals. And so as I expressed to you when we met, um, I think one of the most important things this committee always aspires to is particularly when a complaint rises to a, a level of significance that we should learn about, uh, that it's important for this committee to know about that. And, and I think you'll find that in that regard, uh, this is a committee that takes its oversight role very seriously in matters that um, could, could undermine the important work uh, that occurs at the agency. So again, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you all for being here. We look forward to hearing your testimony and, 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 and your answers to our questions. Thank you, Senator Rubio.